how much of an impact does a relationship have on our physical health? And can a prognosis of cancer, diabetes, depression be significantly worse because we are in an unloving environment? And would our chances of survival and recovery be greater if we were in a loving relationship? I understand that illness can put a great strain on all relationships. But what if your relationship is the cause of your illness? I think it'll be quite naive of us to not consider that our environment can be a contributing factor in either supporting our health or contributing to our health decline. We are the fish in the fish bowl. So the health of the water, the health of our environment, whether it's physical or psychological or internal, plays a significant role in our ability to stay well. And I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you in no uncertain terms, because nobody probably has ever said this to you, but if you are consistently living in an environment that has an undercurrent of hostility, envy, conflict, uncertainty, you are putting your health at risk. So in this video, I'm going to clarify how relationships can be detrimental to your health. And I'd really like to make this point in the beginning. And that is that this isn't about blame, but rather it's about taking self responsibility. We are only victims when we don't know. And awareness is the first step to making a change. And once we know, we cannot pretend that we don't know because then we are participating in self betrayal. So I'm going to assume that you suspect that there is a link between your wellness and a relationship with a particular person in your life. Most of us unknowingly endured narcissistic abuse and we've spent thousands of dollars and years believing there was something wrong with us. So narcissistic personality disorder is one of the few conditions where the patient is left alone and everybody else is treated. So we may have been diagnosed with anxiety, with depression, chronic pain, migraines, irritable bowel, but somehow deep down, we knew that this diagnosis or the treatment that we were prescribed was not really alleviating our suffering. And you know, your body may not respond to medical treatments or drugs because your anxiety is actually a natural response to living in an energetically toxic environment. So I really want to break it down for you so you can begin to start to make sense of a few things that may be related to being in a dysfunctional environment and the impact that it has on your physical health. A relationship can be a safe haven that we turn to in times of distress or when we're facing problems in our life and we have a person that reassures us and gives us advice, someone that we can share our hopes, our dreams, our successes with, and you feel instantly better after spending time with them. However, with narcissistic relationships, they are not a place that we can turn to for support, for encouragement, for reassurance. In fact, it's the exact opposite of that. Being in a relationship with someone on the spectrum of narcissistic personality disorder is an extremely stressful experience and not just psychologically. The relentless pressure you feel has a deep impact on your body and it's particularly destructive when we don't recognize that we are enmeshed and we've been manipulated to believe that this crazy making environment is somehow normal. You're constantly feeling anxious, apprehensive, uncertain, fearful, angry, irritable, worried, on edge. You're basically always on alert. You're chronically in a hypervigilant state and your mind is constantly in analysis. You know, what did they say? 
Why did they behave this way? How can I make it better? Maybe if I tried harder. So you're trying to figure out their unpredictable behavior all the time. Your mind never rests. So medically speaking, you're permanently in the fight or flight mode. Your adrenals are pumping out stress hormones. So you'll experience hypertension, increased heart rate, shallow, fast breathing. You feel knots in your stomach as the stress slows your digestion. And if this continues, you'll struggle to digest food properly. You might experience heartburn, ulcers. And if you're not breaking down food properly, you're not getting the nutrients that you need to nourish your brain, to nourish your cells. So you'll suffer nutritional deficiency, which could present in a range of symptoms from anxiety, depression, skin rashes, allergies, um, accelerated signs of aging. With your adrenals constantly in high gear, you'll have trouble switching off. So you'll experience feelings of overwhelm, irritability, insomnia, and inability to maintain sleep, or you'll wake up feeling exhausted despite having 10 hours sleep. Sleep and deep rest is essential for healing. Long-term stress leaves your body in an inflammatory state. And here's an interesting fact that you may not know about. All diseases ending in the word itis mean inflammation. It's a suffix used in pathological terms to denote inflammation of an organ. So gastritis is an inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. Neuritis, inflammation of the nerves. Dermatitis, inflammation of the skin. Thyroiditis inflammation of the thyroid and on and on it goes rheumatoid arthritis the list just goes on you you get that right it's all related to an inflammatory state and i think you'll notice in yourself that any illness that you may have had or you currently have is made worse by stress so chronic stress wears down your immune system So you become vulnerable to every cold, cough, flu virus going around. And it may be difficult for you to recover from an infection. You are hyper-adrenalized. So it's a recipe for eventual chronic fatigue syndrome. And does having a lowered immune system significantly increase your risk of developing cancer? Long-term ongoing stress will have an impact on your metabolism. We may self-medicate with food and alcohol to manage this insidious, unrelenting stress. So, you know, um, we often gain weight, become obese, find it impossible to lose weight. We can develop glucose intolerance, metabolic syndrome, diabetes. And I mean, stress has an undeniable impact on all of these conditions. And I'd just like to mention briefly that there still is very little awareness and recognition of psychosomatic disorders, which are basically physical diseases that are thought to be caused or made worse by mental factors such as stress and anxiety. So psychosomatic symptoms are basically how emotional trauma manifests itself in physical symptoms. So just as an example, The breasts are meant to represent nurturing, nourishment, mothering. So if our body manifests something like a cyst or lumps in the area of the breast, what our body could be communicating is that we are refusing to nourish ourselves, that we may be busy putting everybody else first and find it extremely difficult to nurture ourselves. In a narcissistic environment, whenever we are in their presence, we just want to avoid them. We want to hide. We want to become invisible. So we hide behind books, behind busyness, or we just permanently withdraw into our room where we can finally get some peace and quiet. Their energy is venomous and it infects you like a virus that you just can't shake and it might take you days to recover from. Our body instantly tenses up and we begin to hold our breath. We get brain fog as we try and make sense of the confusion they call conversation. You begin to feel your vitality 
your life force being drained from you. And narcissists are sadistic and they do take a secret pleasure from watching you suffer. And that's because they gain power from innocently observing you on your endless search for answers from practitioners, healers, specialists. They envy your happiness, your health, your contentment, and they will sabotage your efforts to heal because they thrive on the energy that all your suffering elicits. Our conscious mind can't make sense of all of this. We don't want to believe how much harm we are allowing ourselves to be exposed to. We desperately want to believe this person has our best interests at heart. So we spend years tolerating this toxic environment. But our denial, repression, being naive or passive will eventually show. Living with a narcissist will eventually take its toll on you physically. It's not a matter of if, but when. And the narcissist will hate and mock you for becoming ill because you may no longer be able to be his little slave and provide all the attention, cooking, cleaning and be at his beck and call anymore. Narcissists are disgusted with weak and sick people and they often use their partner's health decline as an opportunity to devalue them, taunt them, humiliate them. They'll make cruel, sadistic remarks, become very frustrated blame and attack you for becoming ill. Your illness is evidence that you are defective, unattractive and unlovable. Or they will use your illness to become the saint. Your diagnosis will be a trophy so they can tell anyone and everyone about it. It's an opportunity for them to be in the limelight and discuss in great detail how attentive they are. So their discussion will be mostly about all that they're doing for you not about how you're feeling it's a great opportunity for them to also milk the victim card you know feel sorry for them how difficult your illness is on them and let's not forget that whatever they're experiencing is a hundred times worse so your illness is just an annoyance and you should get over it because you have no idea how bad it is for them Or there's also a high chance that the narcissist will also completely abandon you. And this is the gradual, perpetual nightmare of how narcissistic abuse destroys your health. And it's something that most of us never talk about. And this is why it's so important for you to take care of your health. Not spend 95% of the time trying to figure out how to help them. You need to help yourself. Have a healing plan in place. Develop a support system you can turn to and take immediate steps to protect yourself. You need to recognize the impact this relationship is having on your health. Listen to the signs that your body is screaming out at you and don't doubt your sanity. Your intuition is always right on. And denial isn't a part of any healing protocol because denial can And will cost you your physical, psychological, financial and spiritual life. And this is something I'm so clear on. Because I've watched and personally experienced this slow, chronic erosion of health. I know what this ambient form of abuse can do. And nobody ever confronted me this way. And oh god, how I wish that someone did. No psychologist, no doctor, no counsellor, no healer. Nobody confronted me with this. So if what I've discussed resonates with you, please see it as a loving and firm confrontation that you need to wake up and take care of yourself. Narcissistic environments will hinder every aspect of your life, from your psychological health to your physical well-being. And one way to prove this to yourself is to take a break for a week or two. Go on a vacation by yourself and if your symptoms magically disappear or you start feeling significantly better chances are you found your cause despite the narcissist programming you to believe that life is hard love is hard that suffering is inevitable it's all a lie because well-being abundance and love is your natural state